Here at Remark, we talk a lot about decentralization. And after recent events with FTX and SBF, people are realizing more and more that being able to have true ownership over your assets and experience without having to rely on centralized servers is incredibly important. So how exactly are Remark NFTs decentralized and how do they maintain it? Well, that is what we are deep diving today, Remark Data Decentralization. Everyone is currently focused on FTX, its financial collapse, and all its related entities that ended up being incredibly centralized. But have you ever wondered if this could happen to your NFTs? Do you know if your NFTs are safe? Do you know how they're stored and if it's decentralized or centralized perhaps? Because you may have an awesome NFT avatar that you have been upgrading for years, but if the image and data for that NFT avatar is stored on a centralized server, you are in danger of losing that progress if the server goes down. Why not just store all of the data and images for NFTs completely on-chain then? Well, this has problems too. Sometimes NFTs are fully on-chain, represented as math formulas or literally putting images on-chain, but this is expensive, impractical, and, and not very flexible. NFTs may exist on the blockchain, but most projects store NFT data off-chain. To understand why, you need to understand what an NFT is. An NFT is usually just simply a reference link to a URI, a Uniform Resource Identifier. A URI is a unique sequence of characters that identifies a logical or physical resource used by web technologies. In other words, it is usually a URL, or a Uniform Resource Locator. This can be an IPFS address, a HTTP address, a Filecoin address, or etc. Behind this URI is a file which contains the metadata about this NFT, like its name, attributes, and another URI which points to the image or media file it references. So this is the first step of decentralization to check in any project. Where is the first URI hosted? If it is hosted on IPFS or the interplanetary file system, then it is considered decentralized. This is because IPFS is a file sharing peer-to-peer -peer network for storing and sharing data in a distributed file system. On the other hand, if it is hosted on HTTPS, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, then someone else owns that server. In other words, it is centralized. Remark uses IPFS to host the first URI, which is the first step of decentralization. So when you click on an NFT to view it, the first URI it is using is on a decentralized network. The second step of decentralization to check is where the media file itself is hosted. Remark also uses IPFS to host this media file linked to Remark NFTs. When we compare this to most other NFTs, this is oftentimes not the case. This is because today, on EVM, the URIs and media files of most NFTs are centrally hosted because that is the OpenSea default when minting. With Remark multi-resourced functions, our NFTs have many of these URIs per NFT because with multi-resources, each resource or media output, like a video, image, or song, has its own pair of URIs. But all of them have at least one copy of a decentralized IPFS backup. Now, if this is dizzying, don't worry. Feel free to rewatch the video a few times. At the end of the day, decentralization has become a bit of a marketing buzzword in the crypto community. But there are so many layers to decentralization itself. And this is something that we here at Remark have considered carefully in building the tools of our singular NFT marketplace. We truly do take every layer of decentralization seriously. Thanks for watching this video. We here at Remark are building the most advanced NFTs in the world. If you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. We'll see you next time.